Well, as you can see, we got a guitar we're going to be painting. And um, what he wants on this one is he wants it to look old and rusty. And there's a couple gouges and nicks in it. He wants to leave those because those are actually things that have happened in his career. And um, they mean something to him. So we're going to kind of highlight them and accent them and use the gouges and chips in the edges of the sides of it. Like there's a pretty good size one right there. We're going to be using Audubon in it, using Iwata, all the products from Coast Airbrush, and I'm Ed Hubs from Full Blown Customs. Well, I've sanded everything with 320. All the pieces are here. I went ahead and taped them to a box, and the guitar is hanging behind me. Sanded with 320, went around them with red Scotch Brite, wiped them down with wax and grease remover, and now I'm going to use Audubon Sealer. I'm going to take some black, gray, and burgundy, and I'm going to make my own rust looking color. The burgundy is actually, I thought if it looked like that right there, that's kind of the color we're going for, but it's a little brighter than that when you open up the, the bottle. And uh, so I'm going to mix up kind of a brownish um, rust color, and it's mixed eight parts sealer to one part uh, reducer. And uh, the reducer we'll be using is the W500, which is high performance reducer. We'll be using that. And uh, we're going to put two light medium coats on. I'd said a minute ago the reduction was 8 to 1. It's actually 9 to 1. I might want to read the can myself. Um, just for everybody that's uh, mixing this at your house or whatever, doing it at your own shop, all the reductions are right here on the side of the can. So even I need to read them sometimes. See the guitar sitting there uh, swinging back and forth. It's pretty wet. Actually, got a little too wet. If you look at this piece, I'm going to put in front of you. You can see how some of it's satin, and then as I roll it, you can see the shine. That's where it's still too wet. You want it to dry like all this right here. All this right in here is a nice satin finish. That's how you want it to look before you put your next coat on. The heat gun works best, but. Uh, you can also take your, your gun itself and just use the air pressure and uh, speed up the drying process. Now that we have it painted, we're going to use the same sealer that we already had. I got a little bit left. I'm going to add some tan to it. I'll have to reduce that a little bit. But we're going to make it a little bit lighter color because this is the picture that he's gave me that he wants to match up. We've already got that kind of brownish burgundy color for the rust look. Now we're going to make this uh, lighter color. We'll also use some rusted up looking ivory color and make it look like it's broke open and stuff and rusted around it. So that's how we're going to keep doing it, just using the same colors that we've already started with and just uh, lightening and darkening them to the point that we have a good color match there. Let's do it one more time. I'm going to do a little bit lighter pattern. And I'll make it heavy in one spot. Take my gun. I'm going to heat this up because I want this to dry over here. see it a little bit right there. It doesn't show up as good in the camera as it does um, standing here looking at it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up even a lighter color and spray it on there so you can actually see All it. Right. we got a little bit of a different color here. It's a little bit lighter. So it'll really stand out and show you what I'm doing. So I'll squirt this on. I'm just kind of blotching it in there. All right, we've switched it over. Here's your glass cleaner again. And I've got kind of a tan mixture going. I 
And you can see right here, I sprayed it really heavy, so I'll spray the paint just above that. See how it's all kind of broken up right there? It'll leave a really neat looking pattern. Alright, take the heat gun. And you want to basically dry just the paint itself. I'm not trying to dry up this, even though you can see it coming back a little bit. See how it's starting to move when you get the heat on it? Because I want that texture, I want that design. Okay, the paint's dried enough. Now we can start kind of dabbing it off. taken white, a couple drops of black, and just a drop of uh, yellow. I made an ivory color, and I'm going to create the bottom half of it to look like the whole guitar used to be an ivory color, and then the rust um, kind of started taking over. So as you see this going, I'm doing everything right now with just paint guns, and then I'll start using an airbrush. We'll heat gun this and then flip it over and just keep doing the same process until we get it covered. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a glass cleaner in a minute. Heck, why we're showing you is just do it while we got the camera on. And I'm going to do that all the way around the guitar, all the way around across the back and everything. And this top half will be the kind of the rust color. And I'm going to do still a whole lot of airbrushing. Whole lot of, wow. I'm going to do a lot of airbrushing, but I'm going to make this the line right there where it looks like the um, rust has been taken over. Well, time for airbrushing. So we got our little Iwata holder that I made. And then we got some wicked colors in the one ounce bottles. And it's pretty handy. This is set up for one ounce bottles. I also have another one set up for two ounce bottles, but this works pretty good. But we're going to use black. We're going to go around this edge here, creating this as almost a lip like this used to be white, and then all the rust came over top of it. So I'll do the black right here, and then we're going to do some uh, rust colors like yellows and browns and stuff like that, where it's like dripping down off of it. First, we're going to just kind of fog it across there.
we'll use a little Windex again. Well, Auto Air sent us a uh, bunch of colors here. Thank you, Mark Evler. Um, this is a Bloodline set, and these are just Cretex colors here. Um, I'm going to kind of go through them, pick a color that I, I want to use for the rust. And I see one in here already. We're going to pick one like this, and there's a couple other different ones in here. Oh, yeah. These will work great. So we're going to kind of mix these up a little bit. We're going to start creating the uh, rust color coming off the edges. Not going to go all the way around, but we're going to have some spots in it. And we'll have, uh, might have some breakthroughs of white up in here, some patches. And then we'll do the same thing on that. I'm going to spray it right along this edge a little bit. Kind of streak it down a little bit even. And I'm not going to follow that entire edge. I'm going to kind of hit and miss across it. We're just going to kind of keep going across. I'm going to get a um, close-up of this so you can see it a little better. Well, instead of just fixing it off camera, I probably should explain to you, because I try to explain all my mistakes, how do you fix it? You can see that I sprayed it pretty, pretty dark, so it's already at the wrong angle being dark, so what I do is kind of come back, fog pattern it in, and widen it up. And almost make it look like a stain. And then that way it takes your eye away from that line being incorrect. Now what I was just talking about a minute ago about how it's running straight down. Okay, I have this other um, pick piece here, or guard piece. I don't know enough about guitars to be even talking technical term. Anyway, here's a plate that goes on top of the guitar. I'm going to bring some rust color that looks like it runs down here and then drips off this edge. And I'm going to do it in a fog pattern to begin with. Okay, see I messed up right there. Went way too high. I'm trying to shoot it off at an angle so you guys can see. So I'll use a, a pattern here. And I'm going to have to go back in and take some of my darker brown and create something right here because it just looks like it's coming out of nowhere. I'm not going to worry about that spot right now. I'm just going to kind of move on. What I just did there when you see me shoot off to the side, because it's water-based, sometimes it wants to um, clog up your tip a little bit or it'll, it'll kind of be spraying and it'll just kind of stop. So just shoot it off to the side. Not in somebody else's face, setting off to the side though. 